everybody. Stay tuned. It's Dr. Jill live. I'm going to get set up here. You can say hello. Tell me where you're from. Start uh, adding in your questions. Say hello. And I'm going to get this set up so that I can see you on all the feeds here. And we are going live here on Instagram and on Facebook and on Zoom. I'm on three platforms. This is a first for me, but I'm here live to answer your questions. Um, I will be watching for everything that you guys have to say. Please stop by, say hello, tell me where you're from. Um, today is the first time ever I'm going live on three platforms at once. So I've got my computer here, my phone here on Instagram, on Facebook. So if you see me looking around, I'm just trying to listen and watch for all of you. Say hello. Um, tell me where you're from and ask your questions live. I'm here to answer your questions today, especially about mold toxicity. So stay tuned. And uh, like I said, wherever you are watching, say hello and let me know where you're from. And I'm just getting set up here so that I can see the feed on all aspects and be sure and answer your questions live. So um, before we get started, I will just, of course, tell you what's coming out soon here. My new book, Unexpected um, Finding Resilience Through Functional Medicine, Science, and Faith. I am so excited to share this with you. If you haven't already ordered your copy, um, grab your copy anywhere books are sold, and then be sure and go back. I put together some amazing resources for you um, free at readunexpected.com. So once you purchase the book, go back to readunexpected.com and grab these free things. First one here, I actually have to show you. It is a free coloring journal. So excited about this. Part of my transformation and healing was getting back to my inner child, my creative self. Um, and coloring was a just a powerful, super profound thing that helped me in healing. It allowed me to be more creative. And even now, I'm sure many of you have already heard this before, but I literally will, um, in my car, there's a bag and it, it contains coloring books and colored pencils and markers and things. And I love, love to bring it out when I'm having coffee with my girlfriends. And I say, hey, you want to color with me? Now my girlfriends all know, so they expect it. But a lot of people were like, really? Color? And you know what? It brings out that childlike curiosity and playfulness. Uh, it brings like depth to your friendships. So grab this. This is free once you purchase the book at readunexpected.com. Be sure and head over and get your copy of this. Here is, like I said, on Tuesday, you guys, next Tuesday, after all these years of working on this um, soul journey, um, it's coming out on Tuesday. So if you've already pre-ordered, you're going to get your copy in the mail really soon. And I'm so happy the publisher, look at this beautiful cover. Um, my publisher actually was saying the other day, it's like art. They're so happy with how it turned out. And so am I. I feel like, you know, books are a lost art. I actually really like to actually feel my book still. I still listen to the audio versions and it's my book is available. I actually recorded it um, myself in my voice on Audible. So you can get that copy if you prefer to listen to your book. But um, be sure and get your copy of this. I have put my heart and soul into this. It's my journey, my story. But the biggest thing is, it's not really about me. I think the story is important because we all have a story and I really share with the depth and authenticity and vulnerability in the book about my own journey. But my real goal is for you as the reader to see yourself in the journey, to be inspired and encouraged. And um, maybe just to know that it's possible for you two to heal from mold related illness or whatever you're going through. Um, I know that I'm not the only one to suffer. We all have our journeys and our suffering and our illnesses and things that we're going through. And I just want to be an encouragement and a source of strength and hope for you. And I, like I said, I put my heart and soul into this. So let's talk first while I'm waiting for questions to come in. Um, hi, everybody. All kinds of questions. Can black mini lines be from mold in your nails? So I have a question here, those little black lines in your nails. You know, those can be signals almost like a tree with the rings around the tree at a certain point in your life. If there was an insult or a toxic exposure, maybe you got carbon monoxide poisoning, um, you can actually have lines that go in your nails and they're based on the timeline of when that happened. I don't know that I would say that black lines in your nails are specific to mold. So there could be other causes, but that's a great question. Hi, Betty. Great to see you there. Um, hi, Lori. Hi, Emily. Hi, everybody joining us now. We are on three platforms. We're on Zoom. We're on Facebook and we're on Instagram. So wherever you see me, if you see me looking around, I've got lots of screens here. And I want to um, be sure and pay attention to everybody who's joining us live. Hi, Kimberly on Facebook. Hi, Sally. Hi, Karen. 
Hi, Gina. Um, stop by, say hello. Tell me where you're from. And on Facebook, please do the same. Oh, Betty, thank you. Betty says the book is so good. She got one of the first advanced copies. And um, thank you for sharing that, Betty, because my hope and goal is to change and impact lives and inspire people. I think nowadays, you guys know this, we are in a time of unprecedented stress and illness and systems falling apart and the job market's different and, and health is different. And I think more than ever, we need to band together and give each other hope and healing and encouragement. And I just want to be the best that I can, a source of that for all of you. And also just for um, knowing that healing is possible, that autoimmunity is reversible. So before I start again, jump in, say hello, ask your questions. Hi, gluten-free Amy, um, the NeuroQuant test helpful. How um, does it for mold in the brain? Okay. So Amy's asking about the NeuroQuant. Let's talk about that. I'll just kind of go with your questions and then I'll talk specifically about some of the mold resources here in my new book, which is out next Tuesday. Um, also, if you are here live, whether you're on Instagram or Facebook, same time on next Tuesday, the 28th. So 4.30 Mountain, 6.30 Eastern, please join me. We're going to have a virtual book launch party, Instagram, Facebook. Um, come join me. We'll celebrate and we will talk all things mold, reversible autoimmunity, anything you want to talk about. So keep the questions coming. Hi, Brenda. Um, so back to your question about NeuroQuant. Um, NeuroQuant. NeuroQuant is a type of um, a computerized system that looks at an MRI of the brain. So first of all, you need to get a non-contrast brain MRI and then what you do is the computerized programming called NeuroQuant software will analyze that MRI of your brain. And it looks at different parts of the brain, like your hippocampus or your amygdala, and it blows it up into like a certain shape or volume. It's called volume metrics. And then it tells you what your volume of those certain parts of the brain are in relation to um, other people. So for example, if you have areas like the main um, cortex, the frontal cortex, and it's uh, hypertrophied, which means it's enlarged that can indicate inflammation in parts of the brains that are enlarged. Then on the other side, you could have something like hippocampal atrophy. Now that's not a good thing because your hippocampus is your memory center. And if it's very shrunken in like 1% of the normal population, that could indicate that there's shrinkage or damage to that part of the brain. So gluten-free with Amy is asking about neuroquant with mold. I have done two neuroquants in my life. Um, I probably will do more. I did one in 2015, right after the mold. And I did one in 2020 and I did see changes related to the mold. And, um, so often we can tell by different parts of the brain, if there's atrophy or sorry, atrophy or hypertrophy, um, we can decide if there's, you know, parts of the brain that have been damaged. Now, the other piece about this is what I believe about many, many things inflammatory. A lot of this can be reversible. I've seen hippocampal size actually change. So this is with NeuroQuant we're talking about here live on Instagram and Facebook on Zoom. And we're talking about NeuroQuant for mold. So keep your questions coming. Seaside or sandpiper, Seaside Sandpiper asked about bee venom therapy with Ryan Sutter. So I don't know if you guys saw last year, if you um, are on my feed on Instagram, or if you're not, you can go there. There's an article that was posted in People Magazine about Ryan interest to Sutter, um, who came to see me uh, regarding some mold toxicity and Lyme disease. Now he um, was just a phenomenal person to meet and really dedicated to his health. And he went on to pursue bee venom therapy and it really worked for him. Um, I am not a prescriber of bee venom therapy. I know enough about it to know that in some cases it works. I wouldn't typically say it's my primary choice to start with, but for some people who aren't doing well, um, they have had success. So jury's kind of still out on that as far as how effective it is. But for that particular case, um, he, and he talks about it in the People Magazine article um, from last year, last fall. Um, hi, Shannon on Facebook. Um, what are your thoughts on taking thyroid meds for mold issues and lower thyroid? Okay, so um, this is a little interesting question because I wouldn't necessarily treat mold issues with thyroid medication, but what happens with mold related issues is the whole hypothalamic pituitary axis is pretty massively disrupted. And what can happen is um, the uh, estrogen gets upregulated through aromatase. So a lot of men and women have estrogen dominant symptoms where, you know, heavy, ten, uh, heavy periods, tender breast, uh, weight gain, uh, bloating, all those kinds of things, even endometriosis or fibrocystic breast. Um, the thyroid often gets disrupted in the sense of there's not a good feedback loop. So you look normal on your labs, but you may feel hypothyroid or have those symptoms because your body's not converting from T4 to T3. So that's not uncommon at all. 
And, um, and so if someone really looked hypothyroid, I would definitely treat them with thyroid medication, but typically mold by itself, isn't just a cause of hypothyroid. However, mold can upregulate TGF beta, which is a marker of autoimmune disease and a driver of autoimmunity. And if I saw someone with Hashimoto's and symptomatic disease and low T3, T4, I would absolutely treat them. Another thing that can be really helpful for exhaustion and mental brain fog is just T3 therapy. As long as you're watching the TSH and making sure it's not suppressed, um, T3 is a type of thyroid that you can use. Hello, everybody on Instagram. Hello, everybody on Facebook. We're live answering your questions today. So super excited to be here. Um, keep the questions coming. You guys have some great questions. I want to just talk again. I mentioned earlier, the book's coming out Tuesday. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to hear back from you guys who have ordered the book and to get your copy. But I want to actually go inside and talk a little bit about what is in the book on mold and some real practical things while you're Please keep putting in your questions because I'll be watching those and I'll be answering those in between. So one concept I always want to talk about is toxic load um, plus infectious burden. So toxic load is the environmental exposures that we all have around us. Um, I see Balanced Lavender is asking about best ways to remove zero lenin mycotoxin and what to do if you have endometriosis. I will come right back to you with that question. But I want to talk briefly about toxic load and infectious burden. So in the realm of functional medicine, um, we really have this two-pronged thing that's almost always at the root of complex chronic illness. It's toxic load and it's infectious burden. So most of the complex chronic inflammatory issues are a combination of those two. So toxic load, again, today we're talking about mold and mold-related illness illness is a big part of that. And a lot of people don't know that mold's affecting them, but it can massively, uh, massively affect um, your ability to detox, your ability to think, your ability to heal, your risk of autoimmunity, all kinds of things. So back to your question um, about xerolenin and mycotoxin detox and what to do about endometriosis. So detox at the core of mold exposure is first of all, um, try to eliminate the exposure, like get out of the environment where you're getting a lot of mold exposure. That's the number one thing, because anytime you have mold exposure, you probably aren't really going to get very well. If you stay in that exposure, it's almost like your bucket, your toxic load is filling up and spilling over the top. And if your bucket's full, you need to empty out that bucket and decrease toxic load by getting out of the exposure. It's almost like you're bailing out a boat that's leaking. So Jamie asked from Colorado, living in a home with mold turned out, it was sewage coming from under the home for a while, diagnosed with Crohn's, a foot of small intestine removed. Oh my goodness, Jamie, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, my history has Crohn's and mold and all these things intertwined. And now I see kind of the correlation um, with my history with cancer and Crohn's. And um, so mold can trigger autoimmunity because it triggers TGF beta. And for some people that will go really high. And we have two parts of our immune system, T reg cells and TH17 cells. Actually, there's a lot more parts than that, but these are two arms that are kind of opposing. T reg cells are the parts of the immune system that kind of keeps everything in check. It's like the bouncers at a bar or the policemen, you know, that are keeping the, the, the city um, event at bay and not having too many people out of control. So the T reg cells keep your immune system so that you don't overreact. But the TH17 cells will actually help you fight infection. So it drives some of those markers in the immune system to fight bacteria and fight things. And if mold is a trigger, a virus is a trigger, but those need to be in balance. And often in mold, the TH17 arm will be over fighting. It'll be trying to eliminate your body, that mold from your body or that exposure. So what happens is as you have that exposure um, with the TH17 cells going up, well, then your um, risk of autoimmunity goes up. So you have a decreased risk of um, actually fighting off those infections and an increased risk of autoimmunity. And that is one of the reasons why mold is so toxic and pre can present with brain fog and fatigue and migraine headaches and histamine issues and mast cell activation syndrome. And it can also present with issues with autoimmunity. So new autoimmunity sometimes can be from mold. Hey, everybody. I just stopped by to let you know that my new book, Unexpected, Finding Resilience Through Functional Medicine, Science, and Faith is now available for order wherever you purchase books. In this book, I share my own journey of overcoming life-threatening illness and the tools and tips and tricks and hope and resilience I found along the way. This book includes practical advice for things like cancer and Crohn's disease and other autoimmune conditions, infections like Lyme or Epstein-Barr and mold and biotoxin-related illness. What I really hope is that as you read this book, you find transformational wisdom for health and healing. If you want to get your own copy, stop by readunexpected.com. There you can also collect your free bonuses, 
So grab your copy today and begin your own transformational journey through functional medicine in finding resilience. Okay, let's see. Uh, hi, Lively and Wise. Hi, Runaway Cat. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, uh, Trisha. Hello, everybody who's joining me live on both Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we're answering your questions live, so just keep them coming. Say hello. Throw in questions anywhere you see me. Like I said, I have a bunch of screens in front of me, so you'll see me looking all over the place as I try to answer questions and say hello and, and see all of your questions. Okay, so Sienna says, Dr. C, where do you typically start when a patient has both porphyria and PANS? Okay, now we're getting complex. Um, you know what? I think that there'll be maybe a whole nother um, uh, Instagram and Facebook live with pan and pandas. That's a big topic and probably more than we can cover today since we're talking about mold. But um, the issue there would be um, porphyria can be an issue with uh, a toxic load at the core, toxic load and infectious. So we're back Sienna to our equation where I said functional medicine is always about toxic load and infectious burden. So I would go back, step back and say, okay, what toxins and infections are creating the pan panda scenario? And how do we decrease toxic load through detox, through decreased exposure? And then also how do we address the inflammation created by old infections? One in particular, oh, thanks Sienna, uh, mold exposure too. Oh my goodness, I see you asking, but also mold exposure. So what I would do first in that case, Sienna, is um, uh, deal with the toxic load because often the toxic load, the mycotoxins mold produces and other toxins will weaken our immune system. And because of that, then we will actually be more at risk for those infections like old Epstein-Barr, old Lyme disease, Borrelia, Bartonella, Babesia, you name it, other viruses that pop up. Hi, April, just received your mold kit. Yay. Um, and she's asking, so I don't know if you guys know or not, but if you don't, um, molddetoxbox.com um, and my retail store, drjillhelp.com, you can find the mold detox box, the miracle mold detox box. And if you um, maybe uh, are looking for an easy way to get started, what I did uh, with that mold detox box, I partnered with Quicksilver Scientific, and we just tried to create a way that you could do a detox on your own. If you're waiting to see a doctor or you're trying to get you know, help and you need help, it's kind of like, I joke about this. This is a terrible analogy, but it's like the happy meal of mold, right? <laughs> Again, terrible analogy, but it's like all in one. It just makes it very easy to get started and to start to detox if you don't have a lot of you know, help and assistance and it's got everything you need there. So you're asking about um, if you do the mold kit, which you just received April, um, thyroid. Okay. So the thing with thyroid is you got to make sure you take it away from binders by four hours. Normally thyroid, um, I'm a huge fan of tyrosine. If you haven't asked your doctor about tyrosine, it's a T4 that is in MCT oil and very, very bioavailable, easily absorbed and a really, really wonderful way to take your thyroid medicine and to get good results. I've switched almost all of my patients over to tyrosine um, just because it works. It's basically thyroid itself is this little tiny grain of sand that's put into a little tablet so that you can swallow it. But it's such a small amount that the binders like lactose and fillers and things that are in your thyroid really do make a difference on absorption. Um, it's why I never compound my thyroid because all of the compounding, depending on how they do it, can make a big difference in what you're getting. But this tyrosine is a brand name you can get at Walgreens through your doctor is my favorite form of thyroid because it's so absorbable. All it is, is that thyroid medication, the T4, a bioidentical to your body um, in MCT oil. So it's a super clean delivery method with no fillers, no additives, nothing else. And I just find patients do better. So that's a long answer to your question about thyroid and mold. Um, seeing some more questions come in, say hello, tell me what your questions are. And I'm just trying to answer as many as I can. Um, let's see, DK says, uh, reasons for white gums and someone who doesn't have anemia. So the gum, the color of your gum tells a lot about your body. And um, certainly lighter gums can indicate, as you mentioned, anemia, which would be um, lack of iron or lack of B12, or for some reason, your body's not making enough hemoglobin. There's multiple reasons. Um, but there's other nutritional issues. You know, if you don't know maybe what's going on and you suspect a nutritional cause, um, what I'd recommend is there's two tests you can get that will look at your nutritional, the whole nutritional values. One is vibrant micronutrients. I love this test. I do it myself every year. Um, and the other is spectra cell micronutrients. And they're both, they're slightly different methods. They're both a few hundred dollars and uh, can be ordered by your doctor. So vibrant micronutrients and um, spectra cell, those are great ways to see, is there any nutritional deficiency causing the white gums? Okay, so um, awesome. Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for your live questions and keep them coming. Okay, I'm back to Facebook to answer some of your questions. 
Um, and on Instagram there, hang in there. I'm watching you guys as well. And I will be answering your questions live just to keep throwing them in the box. I see John is asking about pupils constantly pulsating, dilating, and constricting. I have sears from mold. How do I resolve this? Um, so John, um, pupils are related to adrenals and um, also related to the sympathetic, parasympathetic autonomic system, right? So Sears um, is the chronic inflammatory immune response that comes from mold exposure. And um, it really affects the body. And one thing I learned as I was writing my book, which I've been mentioning because it's coming out on Tuesday, if you haven't got your copy, be sure and go to readunexpected.com to grab your copy. But anyway, um, back to um, mold and pupils dilating and changing and constricting. So this is again related to our autonomic nervous system. And so what I would say is um, sears and chronic inflammatory response and the mold exposure itself really does affect our limbic system. Um, we know this because as I was researching for my book, we find that when we inhale chemicals or, or toxins, especially mold toxins, we literally get a limbic response in our brain. So even if we're like calm and we're centered and we have good resources, we still get a limbic, like a trauma response from mold, from just inhalation of chemicals. And I suspect in sears, there's just dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system. And because of that, that, uh, the pupils could dilate or constrict. Um, and that's maybe more complex than this um, live is, but that should give you an idea, John. Um, thank you, Jamie. And congrats on my book. I uh, hope you get a signed copy. So I'll just say this live. If anybody wants a signed copy, I am signing copies out of my store and any, any copy that you order through the store will be signed by me. Um, and all you have to do there, if you'd rather get it from the store itself, you can go to Dr. Jill Health dot com and just you know search unexpected and anything you any book you order from my store will come directly from me i'll sign it before it goes out the door and you'll get a signed copy so if you prefer to have a signed copy drjillhealth.com is where you get the signed copies of my book every one that i mail out from my office will be signed so if you if you happen to want or if you want a gift for somebody you want hey dr jill can you sign this for my uncle you know or you can sign this for my daughter or whatever let me know drjillhealth.com um, the book is there from our office and I will be signing all of those copies. Okay, back to your questions. Francis says, I did an ERMI and actinomyces came up with a lot of different mycotoxins, including stachy, stachy batteries, black toxic mold. Um, it has both levels home done in the fall. Windows had been open, no visible mold or dusty smells. I was thinking about repeating the test. Um, so ERMI, let's talk a little bit about ERMI. ERMI is a dust sample. It's qPCR, which means... Um, ERMI, the technology, I've said this before on the lives, but I'll say it again for those of you who are new and listening. Um, ERMI basically is a dust sample of your home and it tells kind of historical data from the dust of your home. And it's a really good way to check if you have maybe exposure to mold or have a history of mold in the house. No test is perfect. And so whether it's air sampling or an inspector or an ERMI dust sample, um, none of these are perfect. But a lot of times people would do an ERMI or a QPCR as it's also called, um, because it gives you something you can do yourself before where you hire an inspector to kind of see, do I need to take this seriously? Do I need to look into, you know, what's going on in my home? So it's a great way. I do recommend it. Um, I've done it in my own home every year or so, even my office, just to check and check in with things. But ERMI technology, the number on the ERMI was basically invalidated. So I don't use the, the bottom line number. I just look at the mold species. And again, that technology is called qPCR. That's still valid. So I still use what's called an ERMI. I don't use the ERMI score, but I use the data that's that's resulted there to look at numbers of spores and things that are found in the dust. And again, it's accurate because it's the DNA of the mold in your dust in your home. So if you think that you have a funny looking uh, ERMI score, or say there's this patient ask about stachybotrys popping up in an ERMI, you need to see about finding a source and don't assume it's not there. Maybe retest, you could clean and retest, or you could look at water sources. Has there been any damage like under say fridge line leaking, uh, dishwasher, washer, dryer, um, some pump leaking, um, water intrusion into the foundation of your home. I mean, there is a lot, a lot of things. Actually in my book, I was going to share one thing today about what to do to kind of prevent steps, um, you can take to prevent mold growth. Let's just read a few of these right now. Again, this is right from my book. Um, so you get that if you get a copy, but this is a whole sidebar on steps you can uh, take to prevent mold growth. 
So number one, control the moisture by investing in a dehumidifier and keeping humidity levels under 50%. So here in Colorado, our humidity is very low. So my humidity in my home is usually 20 to 25%, which is kind of on the low side. It's a little uncomfortable at times, but certainly there's less risk of mold growth. But if you're in Miami or somewhere that's warm and humid, you want to really keep your um, home level below 50% and use a dehumidifier if necessary. Um, if you do have a wet spot or you have a dog that you accidentally pees on the floor, you want to clean that up immediately. Make sure that you just dry up any spills as, as uh, much as possible. Um, keep areas prone to mold growth clean, disinfected, and dry. So I often use a borax solution or even uh, diluted bleach if I'm cleaning my drains. Again, this is not necessarily the very best way. There's other non-toxic chemicals, but um, the dilute form of bleach, if you're not treating a mold spot, which I would not recommend bleach for because it'll you know, throw those spores around, but sometimes just um, cleaning or, or using a very dilute solution to spray down your shower after you use it. Those are not bad ideas. Um, have your HVAC professionally cleaned at least once a year. Again, this is ideal. Uh, things that are from my book, Unexpected, some um, tips and tricks on mold growth and uh, fix leaks immediately. If there's water damage, you want to get that dry within 24 hours. You're less likely to have a mold problem if you dry it really quickly. Um, when weather permits, open your doors and your windows to get airflow. I do that a lot and, and highly recommend it. Keep your basement well ventilated. Um, make sure that your sump pump works and there's no overflow or mo moisture soaking the carpet. So if you have carpets in the basement, that's a big problem if you have any moisture that's in there. So just be sure and check that frequently. And then um, you can leave your bathroom fan on for 30 minutes. You know, the college kids are the worst or your teenagers, they go in the bathroom and they take a long, hot shower. They make everything all humid in there. And you want to make sure your event actually vent outside and then the fan is on and you encourage your children to use the vent in the bathroom because that moisture can, you know, wick into wall behind wallpaper and into the walls or other porous materials and cause problems if you don't really keep it dry. Um, dry your bathtub and shower with a squeegee after I just have a squeegee in my shower. And every time I shower, um, every time I use a bathtub, I squeegee it down just to make sure it's nice and dry. So there's no mold growth. Um, clean and repair damaged grout. A grout and grout leakage is just a huge issue for a lot of people. And we think grout is waterproof, but unless you apply a routine sealant where you fix the grout, this could be a big issue where you get um, mold growth either behind the grout or the grout leaks. And behind there is just drywall. And if that gets damaged with moisture, I've seen a lot of people have bathrooms that have issues. So those are just a few of the tips in my book, Read Unexpected, about mold and preventing mold growth. And now I'm back to your questions live here on both Instagram and Facebook and um, ready to answer your questions. So let's see what else we have. Barbara asked about modified citrus pectin and detox from mold. So modified citrus pectin has been studied with lots of chemicals like organophosphates and pesticides and things like that. And um, I'm just seeing Jamie, I'm going to come back to your question on dehumidifier reading over 35. I'll be back to that. But right now we're talking about Barbara's question about modified citrus pectin. Um, it's a great detoxifier, bottom line. It's great for chemicals, especially it's great for um, detox of all types. It is probably not my number one thing for mold, but absolutely as part of a binder or detox protocol, I love citrus pectin. If you want to find a couple of good brands, you can go to drjillhealth.com. There's pectinate and there's a couple other brands there that are excellent. And this is citrus pectin, modified citrus pectin. Um, Kimberly asked, do you recommend provoking agents before taking a heavy metal test? Um, I do. I do. So that's a whole thing, uh, another conversation, but what you would do is you would do a pretest and then you would take a chelating agent and then you do a post-test and you would kind of measure the difference of usually it's DMSA or EDTA. And again, this is under, under doctor's supervision to take that chelating agent. Um, let's see, Hannah says supplemental detox and binders simultaneously with atraconazole supplements alone ineffective because of internal growth. Okay, so this question is really about um, are, are we colonized with mold or do we just get exposed and have toxicity based on it? And both of these things can happen. So you can either be exposed to the mycotoxins that say behind this wall, there's mold. There's not, but say there was, um, and it's releasing mycotoxins into my, my study here. Um, I could have accumulation. Mycotoxins are so small. They're 2.5 microns or less. So basically, as soon as you have a... Um, 
uh, exposure to mycotoxins. They go into the lungs, the alveoli goes right into the bloodstream. There's no transport needed. And this will go right into your bloodstream. So it's really, really toxic if you're inhaling mycotoxins and you can get that toxic accumulation in your tissues. So when we're detoxing from mold, typically what we do is we do sauna, we do dry brushing, Epsom salt baths, anything we do to mobilize those toxins, we take glutathione and all of that will help mobilize the toxins that have been accumulated in your tissues, out of your tissues, into your bloodstream. So that the the kidneys and the liver can filter those and either eliminate them in your urine or in your stool. And of course, sweating can eliminate these as well. So that would be exposure to mycotoxins, but that's very different from colonization, which was the question that I'm just was reading earlier. And the deal with colonization is if you actually inhaled mold spores or you got colonized in your gut with say aspergillus from either inhalation or ingestion of some contaminated food or some environmental exposure. And what happens with the ingestion or the colonization in the gut or the sinuses is you can actually have aspergillus growing or living in your body. And there are different ways to tell this. Usually if you just do a urine mycotoxin test, um, real-time labs does this, vibrant labs does this, and Great Plains does this. Those are all good labs you can use. That usually shows exposure to mold and mycotoxins, but it doesn't necessarily show that you've been colonized by mold. If you do a Great Plains organic acids or a vibrant organic acids test, you may then see colonization. And those are two different things and they're treated differently. The first one's the most common and we treat that with binders and detox and getting that toxic load out of the body. But the second one was the question I went, you know, read a couple minutes ago and that would be treating with antifungals because there's actually colonization. And that would be up to your doctor to help you determine whether you're colonized or just exposed to mold because the treatments are different. But you can do that treatment simultaneously um, and do both of those at the same time. Okay, Sky Kalosa says GI detox is the only thing I'm on. Is there something else to take? And then talked about shoemaker test coming back. Um, so GI detox is a great binder. It's one of my favorites. Um, so is plain old charcoal. And you can find some of my favorite binders at drjillhealth.com. Literally, my very favorite new binder is called Zeobind Plus, and it's at drjillhealth.com. What it does is it combines zeolite and clay and charcoal kind of all together. But literally, plain old activated charcoal, which is very inexpensive, easy for anybody to get, is very, very effective, especially for some of the black toxic molds. And in my history of using binders to get healed from mold, maybe six or seven years ago, um, I primarily used um, WellCall, which is a prescription and uh, charcoal. And again, that was for me personally, what worked. You can use a lot of other things. GI detox is great. Zeobine plus at drjillhealth.com is my favorite, but there's many, many ones out there and they, they all work. They really do. So you don't have to have exactly the right type of binder. I do find adding binders together and using different type the binders they have. So each binder, clay, charcoal, glycomannan, well call, cholestyramine, they all have different affinities for toxins. So when you combine them, they typically have a better affinity overall, and you can take all your binders together, which makes it much easier. Okay. We're going to go with just a couple more questions and then I will be back. Be sure and join me next Tuesday for a virtual book launch party. Same time, 4.30 um, Mountain uh, here on both Facebook and Instagram for a virtual book launch party with Dr. Jill. So I'll be here to answer your questions and we'll have fun and um, all of that. So Okay, Misty, what supplements treatment do you recommend for reflux? Okay, we'll take this one. This is a great question. Um, and then uh, Shania asked about Spornox. So I'll talk about both of these. So reflux. So reflux can be a histamine issue. It can be a low stomach acid issue. It can be a high stomach acid issue. So first thing is with reflux, I say, what is causing the reflux? And I do some workup with the gut, with the blood work and try to find out the cause. Because first of all, if we know the cause, we know how to treat it. If you have low stomach acid, taking betaine HCL um, with pepsin um, will cure reflux, but that's if you have low stomach acid. If you have high stomach acid or you have histamine issues, typically what I'll do is I'll try deglycerase licorice. We have a, a favorite called DGL plus that you can get at drjillhealth.com. And that's my favorite. I have people take it one prior to meals and it usually resolves the problem. Another thing is zinc soothe also at drjillhealth.com. This is a zinc harnessing supplement that coats and soothes the esophagus. So if someone's really um, aggravated with heartburn, first of all, check histamine issues, check mast cell activation, treat that problem. But then as far as treating the symptoms, um, my DGL plus, the zinc soothe, those are one, two, and they work very well. And sometimes a powder works nice that you can mix with water and drink. And the two that I like, and they're very similar at drjillhealth.com are gut calm, 
and gut shield. And they're just very, very similar versions of, of a thing that will coat and soothe and, and give you some relief from heartburn. And I really have great success with the DGL plus the zinc soothe and either gut calm or gut shield powder. Those work very well. So thank you for the questions. Okay. I'm back looking at Instagram. If you guys have any questions there, I'm live and I will answer those and we'll do one more question here. Um, Spornox. Let's see. Should I ask about Spornox? Spornox is iatroconazole. Iatroconazole is an azole antifungal that treats, um, especially aspergillus. So, um, compared to fluconazole, which is similar class, fluconazole is better for, um, candida and, uh, Spornox or atroconazole is better for mold. So depending on if someone's colonized with candida or aspergillus, I will pick based on what they're colonized with and what's more effective. There can be resistance from these meds. So you have to, you know, make sure with your doctor, you're using them carefully and not inducing any resistance um, because that can happen with the azole family. I also use a lot of nice statin. It's very safe. It's non-absorbable and um, you can use it even in baby, you know, very young infants is very, very safe because it's non-absorbable. Um, yeah. Lisa said fluconazole may be extremely depressed. Yeah. If you have a fungal burden and you start treating aggressively with the azoles, you will have pretty massive die-off symptoms and depression can be one of them. So, um, well, I just want to thank everyone for joining me today. It's so fun. Like I said, I'm on all kinds of screens here. So if you see me looking around, um, but come join me again, Tuesday, the 28th of March at 4:30 mountain, I will be live answering your questions. We're having a virtual book lunch party. And if you haven't checked it out, read unexpected.com, get your copy, um, sending you all so much love. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank you for all your love and support. Um, you are loved. And we'll talk soon. Hey, everybody. I just stopped by to let you know that my new book, Unexpected, Finding Resilience Through Functional Medicine, Science, and Faith, is now available for order wherever you purchase books. In this book, I share my own journey of overcoming life-threatening illness and the tools and tips and tricks and hope and resilience I found along the way. This book includes practical advice for things like cancer and Crohn's disease and other autoimmune conditions, infections like Lyme or Epstein-Barr, and mold and biotoxin-related illness. What I really hope is that as you read this book, you find transformational wisdom for health and healing. If you want to get your own copy, stop by readunexpected.com. There you can also collect your free bonuses. So grab your copy today and begin your own transformational journey through functional medicine in finding resilience.